Number 10 asks, a 2 kilogram block is held in equilibrium on an incline of angle theta equals 65 degrees by a horizontal force applied in the direction shown in the figure below. If the coefficient of static friction between block and incline is mu sigma equals 0 0.3, determine the following. A, the minimum value of F, and B, the normal force exerted by the incline on the block. Okay, so this is a, a crazy question. It actually took um, a lot of work um, to even get to approaching the right answer for me. So um, this is, uh, I hope you can follow. So what we have to do is um, we have to create sort of a, a diagram showing all of the forces acting on this block. And now I've oriented this thing in this position because we're going to call this our y axis or our x axis. We're going to call this our y axis. Okay, and so we actually have um, a couple of things happening. As you can see, we we have um, gravity that's going to be hitting this thing where you see the y axis at now. That's where gravity would actually be hitting this thing. So it would actually slice through it. So I'm going to show you what that's going to look like in this plane going to look somewhat like like this and so we have this force of gravity right here which is going to be our 2 kilogram block times 9.8 so it's going to be 19.6 newtons right here on this this plane that's pushing down on this then we have this uh, force right here and it it's going sort of um, that's not really a great angle but sort of that direction and so we've got this unknown force in this direction on this is the x-axis we've also got a, a normal force so we got gravity is right this way we have got this normal force pushing up directly in the y-axis and we have um, we have so, so this this force that I've just drawn if if we look at the y-axis the way it is, it has an x direction and it has, so it has this direction this way and it has this y direction this way. And so this force is actually exerting itself in two directions. And so these are all of the forces we have acting. We've got this normal force, we've got this gravity, and we've got this unknown force. And so we have to figure out in what we have to quantify how they act in each direction. So if we were to say all of the x components, we want to add up all of the x components, what would we do? We know that this is 65 degrees, and that means that, that this angle right here is also 65 degrees. And so we can describe this um, the x as having a, a force that is... Um, since this is my hypotenuse, and this is this is my my triangle here, that um, the adjacent over the hypotenuse that's cosine. So this force times cosine theta is x1. It's my first x force, and then x2. I also have this static force that's um and I forgot to write that down here this is we're going to we're going to label it like this the this static friction this um that's holding the block in place and so we can we can quantify the static force as being um so x2 this this static force we're just going to leave it like that for now and then we're going to try to figure out what it is in a, in a little bit so and then the last thing we have acting on this x direction so notice that this is pushing this way the static force is also holding the block in that direction we have another force gravity and now if you look at gravity so I'm going to go to a, a clean so this is my y this is my x you can see that gravity is kind of dissecting down this way so it's dissecting down this way through the y and the x and so it has an x component about that much and so let me go back so, I can, so you can understand this. If this is 65 degrees, then that also means that my angle between the y-axis and this force is also 65 degrees. So this 
And I know I didn't draw it perfectly to scale. Of course, this, this triangle that we're working on is not drawn as a 65 degree triangle either, so we don't have a lot to work with. But this is also 65 degrees, and to understand why, you can, you can ask in the comments, I can explain why, but all of these angles that we're going to be working with are 65, and so we want to find, we want to make the gravity the hypotenuse, and make the x and y the two sides of the, of the triangle, and so the x component of that would be the opposite, so opposite over hypotenuse, so opposite over hypotenuse is sine, so this sine, um, this 19.6, um, 19 this gravity, gravity is 19.6 sine theta. So those are my three x forces. So I've got the force um, exerted by this in the x direction. And uh, we've got the, the static, and we've got this gravitational force. And now, I want you to notice that, uh, first of all, this is in this direction, this is in this direction, this one over here is in the other direction. So what I know is that my sum of my x's has to equal zero. That means that if I add all of the same directions together and subtract the opposite directions, then it should equal zero. So I could say that... Let me clear this off. I could say that this force times cosine theta, force times cosine theta, plus this this friction force um, minus minus this force of gravity, 19.6 times sine theta, 19.6 sine theta. All of this equals zero, so it's my sum of my x's. It has to equal zero. So we're going to call this equation number one. So zero equals the, this unknown force times cosine theta plus the static for this friction minus 19.6, which is our gravity, our force of gravity times sine theta. The next thing we need to do is add up all of our y's. And so, if this is our y component, we, we know that we have an upward um, uh, normal force, and we also have a, we have a downward force from the gravity, so I'm going to try to draw this so that it intersects everything nicely. This gravitational force. So, here's my x axis. This is my y axis. And I have this this downward force. This makes um, a, a, you know the same angle as this, and so I can say that the downward. I can quantify the downward force as um, the opposite over hypotenuse, which is cos uh, uh, sine, which is sine. So sine theta, f times sine theta. So y one equals f times sine theta y2 is going to be from gravity and gravity uh, the gravitational force you can see that um, it if you remember right it came down like this and so this made a a 65 degree angle and we tried to come over to make a right angle and so this would be adjacent over hypotenuse so that would be cosine, so gravity, so 19.6 cosine theta is the, the last part of that. And then we also have, so we have, these are both down, and we have this third one going up that we're going to call our normal force. So if we add up the sum of our y components, it should equal zero as well, because this thing isn't moving. That's why uh, the sum of x and the sum of y have to equal zero, because this thing is not moving. So I, I want to make sure I explain that clearly. So then, when we add all of these up, so this is going up, these two are going down, and so whenever I, I take this and I, I, say, I can say zero equals this normal force minus 19.6 
cosine theta minus this unknown force times sine theta. We're going to call this equation number two. I'm going to write it right here, zero. And this, I always slash my zeros. It was uh, something that I've, I've had to do in the past for different employers. So um, don't get my zeros confused with my thetas. So equation number two is simply um, n minus 19.6 cosine theta minus this force times sine theta it all equals zero so we're going to call this equation number two and now the, the last thing we remember is so we got all of our x's and all of our y's let's look at what we know and what we don't know so we don't know what this normal force is we don't know what this force is and the last thing we don't know is we don't know what this this friction force is so the if you um, the equation for this friction force is um, we have this coefficient of of friction so it's either a coefficient of static friction or a coefficient of kinetic friction um, but this coefficient of friction um, times the normal force so this is what this equals so we could actually take this and plug this in right here but the other thing is we don't know what n equals and so we're going to use this equation equation number two and we're going to solve for n so n will, negative n will equal negative nineteen minus you know negative nineteen point six cosine theta minus f sine theta but n positive n is going to equal positive nineteen point six cosine theta plus f sine theta so that's we can actually take this even though we don't know what f is we can plug that in for n when, then we'll have a, an equation for friction that we can plug up here and the only unknowns we'll have are two f values that we can solve for so that's what we're going to do next and just to be um, simple I'm going to go ahead down here this uh, friction equals this coefficient of static friction times 19.6 cosine theta plus an unknown F force sine theta that is what this equals so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in up here so we have zero equals force cosine so zero equals this force times cosine theta and I gotta go back and look at it plus plus this down here plus our or this right here our equation for uh, friction so plus this coefficient of um, friction times now whenever we plug this in what we want to remember is that we plug this in for n so all of this has to be multiplied by by our coefficient so do not forget that actually um, I, I forgot to a couple of times in a row I just multiplied it by 19 uh, cosine theta and then I added this after the fact and I got the wrong answer and I had to go back and and look at my equation and I realized I didn't distribute this um, this coefficient of static friction so that's what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and distribute that so nine times 19.6 cosine theta plus so plus plus f or actually let's let's make sure we don't forget this plus this this coefficient of static friction times this force sine theta So all of this is one term, all of this is one term, and then we got to go back up here. So we've got all that in, and then we got a minus 19.6 sine theta, minus 19.6 sine.
theta. Now we're going to simplify and solve for f. So we've got an f here and an f here. We're going to go ahead and simplify, and then we're going to solve for f. Now in simplifying, just remember, replace theta with 65 degrees. Um, replace the coefficient of static friction with 0 0.300, which is just 0 0.3, and that is um, that is all the simplification. That, that, that will allow you to start performing mathematical simplification. So, for example, um, cosine of 65, I'm going to get 0 equals 0 0.422 f. I'm just changing the place of cosine theta and f plus 0 0.3 times 19.6 times cosine theta, which is 65, which is 2.4849. And then I'm going to add 0 0.3, so 0 0.3 times sine 65, so I've got 0 0.26. 7f and that's points 0 0.27189 if you want to take it out further and then I got a minus my 19.6 sine theta so 19.6 sine 65 so minus 17.76 um, and now I'm going to go ahead and combine my like terms of f and I'm going to subtract out this and so we're going to we're going to get zero equals point four four or point I'm sorry point four two two plus point two seven. Uh, so we got zero equals zero point six nine two f, and then it's going to be minus. Okay, so I got two point four eight nine uh, four eight four nine minus seventeen point seven six. So minus 15.275. Uh, so then I can just um, solve for f. I can simply subtract f over to the other side of the equation, get negative 0.692f equals negative 15.275. And I will get f equals, so I divide my negative 15 by the negative 0.692. I get f equals... 22 and so that's f equals 22 so that's the first part of the equation now you have to solve for n but remember we already did solve for n if you remember right we solved for n right here and we did it so that we could plug something in um, right here and so n equals positive 19.6 cosine theta plus f, which we know is 22, sine theta. So let's go ahead and add that 19.6 cosine 65 plus 22 sine 65, and that equals 28. So n, n equals 28 newtons. I halfway expect a lot of questions about this and uh, they're welcome so just send them down in the comments and oh.